I'm here to tell you about thermal energy harvesting and the material you use to do that. And I will start by defining what we need to use that for. And then I will dig into some actual commercial cases that are there right now. We have been, in the previous talks, we have been a bit ahead in the future on, on what materials are coming. But uh, I'm working and we at Delta are working with what is possible right now. Um, so I will dig into the commercial applications that are happening right now, and what we can use the materials we have right now for. And hopefully you will be prepared to generate some new ideas by using thermal energy. Um, why do we need thermal energy harvesting? Um, we have the whole concept of the Internet of Things. We want to build in sensors everywhere. We want to build intelligence in everywhere. And that requires sensors, that requires uh, wireless electronics built in everywhere. I have a, a watch that is connected to my phone. Um, this is the Pebble, if you guys know it. I'm very fond of it, but I need to charge this every second day, and I need to charge my phone every two times a day, and I need to charge my laptop all the time. And if we build in intelligence everywhere, we cannot keep go around recharging, uh, replacing batteries, and drawing cables everywhere. So we need some some way to power that. Um, an example of an Internet of Things device is this uh, Withings scale that is connected to the Wi-Fi. Another example is this uh, Nest the learning thermostat that learns your behavior and adjusts the heat in your home um, to when you wake up, when you get home, and how you do your living. Um, and these are all uh, devices that are examples of the Internet of Things that's coming. Um, and in the theme of the home, we have uh, home automation and within this area we have many sensors, many electronics that use energy. We have uh, security and alarm systems, sensors built into our windows, into our doors, we have heating systems, uh, sensors built onto our radiators, adjusting the temperature in our rooms. Um, and Today, a new home has many, many wires and many batteries around. Um, but it will not be feasible in the future to keep adding that intelligence and still having to draw more cables and replace more batteries. So, energy harvesting harvests energy from the ambient surroundings to supply these electronics, this intelligence with energy. Um, I work, uh, we at Delta work with three types of energy harvesting, solar, kinetic and thermal. Um, I will focus on the thermal energy harvesting and a case of uh, thermal energy harvesting is this camping stove which generates electrical energy from the temperature difference between the fire inside the camping stove and the ambient air. And you can use this while camping where you don't have electricity connection to charge your, your smartphone. Um, another example within the, the theme of, of your home is uh, this intelligent cooking system which has a sensor built into the lid of the pot which tells the stove when to turn down the energy so you don't waste excess energy. There's actually been studies showing that um, today while cooking people waste around 50% of energy because it is not controlled in the optimal way. And this sensor, powered by energy harvesting, is adding that intelligence to make us able to save those 50% of energy. Um, at Delta, we have worked within several energy harvesting projects, but in the theme of uh, the home, we have uh, worked with radiator meters. and. Today, in Denmark, we have in all homes, all apartments, these small radiator meters sitting on each radiator, generating the data for our energy bill. These have wireless connection built in, most of them, and they are supplied with a small battery. But that battery needs to be exchanged every five years or so. So there is this guy who knocks on your door every five years and says, ah, I need to change the battery. And he's very annoying. So, we got rid of this guy. Um, so, we made a system that 
was powered by the temperature difference between the radiator's warm temperature and the ambient colder air. And that was able to power the radiator meter so it could, in theory, work for infinity. So, how do we harvest this thermal energy? Um, thermal energy is harvesting from temperature differences. So, in order to do that, we need something to convert the energy from thermal energy into electrical energy. And we convert that with something called a Peltier element. That is a thermal electric device, um, which comes in several forms. Um, the upper left is a stand-up old-school bulk element that you can get very cheap. Lower left is a small few millimeters wide thin film element that you can embed in many uh, interesting places uh, and they're highly efficient but still very expensive. And in the research area in the future we will see uh, flexible, printable uh, PLC elements. And how do these work? I will take you briefly back to high school physics when we connect a battery to a light bulb the thing making it glow is the charge of electrons and the same thing happens with the Peltier element when we apply a temperature difference. So the Peltier element generates a flow of charges. And if we think about it, um, today in our homes we have a lot of temperature differences around us. Um, our windows, actually the, the walls, uh, the door, the, the door handles, um, between our body temperature and our surroundings, uh, there are uh, many places where there are temperature differences and heat to be harvested or converted to electrical energy. Also inside we have the fire stove, we have radiators, we have our kitchen, we have uh, um, our coffee machine, our toaster, our oven, many, many places where we could embed um, self-powered intelligence um, and I hope that today that we will be able to come up with some, some new utilizations of, of these technologies. Um, but in order to give you a concrete uh, pinpoint of um, how much energy you can actually get out of what a place you put your thermal energy harvesting device. I have just uh, briefly uh, explained uh, how much temperature difference is needed to power uh, different electronics. So if we uh, have a temperature difference of around 1 to 20 degrees, we are in the microwatt area. So that is very uh, low energy, but we can use that to power wireless sensors. So I could, for example, power my watch, or I could power the temperature sensor that controls the temperature inside this building. Um, if we go a bit warmer, 20 to 50 degrees of temperature difference, uh, we can start to light up LEDs, just like the one um, uh, Morton just showed. Um, we could power small motors, small actuators. We could make an, an intelligent lock that locked itself. Uh, when we went out. Um, and then when we go into 50 to 100, several 100 degrees of temperature, we are going up into the watt area. And for charging a smartphone, we would need uh, a temperature difference of at least 50 to 100 degrees temperature difference. So this is sort of, this to, to give you an, an overview of, okay, can I charge my iPhone from the temperature of my skin? No, there is maybe 5 to 10 degrees temperature difference between the air and my skin. That's not enough to power my iPhone, but it can power wireless sensors that can add intelligence that makes it able to do power uh, efficient stuff, like saving the 50% in our, on our cooking stove. So, that was actually one minute shorter than... Uh, <laughs> uh, and... Um, this was a very brief introduction. Uh, I am more than happy to answer many of your questions if.
they are too long to be answered here. Uh, if you write me an email or, or visit our website. Um, Thanks. That's it.